Hello whiskey lovers around the world. Um, Jock again from Scotch and Folk. Um, just to show you, there you are. www.scotchandfolk.nl And here I have the great pleasure in my house to have a very special guest and uh, Mr. Douglas Campbell. Uh, welcome Douglas, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, and Douglas uh, was for many years uh, distillery manager at this great place, Tomatin. Now I'll walk up to the camera with the bottle. Can the camera see it all right? Yes, there we are. Now, many people have the tendency to pronounce this name Tomatin, but it's not, it's Tomatin. Douglas, how, how long were you? Have you been with Tomatin? How long have you been? Had, had you been working? You're retired now, eh? I've retired now. Yeah, I retired in 2009. But I've been with Tomatin. It is now 51 years because I still do some part-time work with the company. Wow. You travel around the world and travel around the world, do some promotions, uh, America, Japan, and uh, most of the. European countries and uh, like Germany, Holland, Belgium, and uh, Sweden. Mostly, so that takes up most of my time. Oh, nice. And um, in this country, in Holland, folks, um, we don't come across tomato all that much, and I've been trying to push it a little bit. Um, I have here in front of me uh, some of the core range of tomato. You, you know, got a nice little plank that goes along with a wee nameplate in front and brass. Um, Douglas, um, tell us about the first one. This is the 12. Eh? This is the standard of the core range. This is the flagship, is it not? The 12 year old uh, tomato. This is the flagship of the company, as you say, Jock. Uh, the 12 year old is probably the very first one when we started to. Uh, do more of our own brands in the last 15, 20 years. It was a 12 year old that we started off with. Because previous to that, all we had was a 10 year old malt, single malt and a big tea blend. Before we started to uh, promote and put the, our own whiskey in our bottles and sell it under the tomato brand. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, it's 12 years old and it's been matured in Bourbon casks, eh? It's been matured in a mixture of uh, some sherries, some American uh, first full bourbons, second full bourbons, and just ordinary European oak. And what we do is uh, just round about the 12 year mark, we uh, put it into the vat, batch it together, mix it up, and fill it back into sherry casks, Spanish sherry ones, mainly ex Olorosos, and uh, marry it and the, back into the warehouse for about nine months to a year before bottling. Well, so it'll be nine months in the Oloroso? Yes. To a year. Okay, now, folks, we've got these little, <coughs> lovely, I'll, I'll show you that as well, the light, nice little glass from Tomatin. It's uh, it's different from a Glen Cairn glass, it's, but it's tulip formed, it'll go up nice and it's got the Tomatin engraved on it. And This is the 12 years old, which is at 40% alcohol by volume. And um, no, I'll just sniff it without water because it's actually it's very nice. It's and it's got a, a good consumer price to it as well. It's in the Netherlands. It will retail at a, well thirty euros, not even around that price, around thirty-ish euros for this uh, tomato twelve-year-old, and it's really quite. Uh, it comes in a box, presentation box, by the way, which um, you don't see here because I've got them on the plank, on the little plint. Now it's got a, a, a nuttiness to it, and Creamy, what, what do you think yourself, Douglas, of the 12? Oh. Well, we, we say normally about the Tomato 12, it's a very drinkable dram. And it's it's pretty smooth because we've got the sherry finish in it, and uh, there is a slight nutness there, vanilla flavour as well. Tomato is noted for being uh, flavoured uh, vanilla, so uh, 
it lingers. Mm -hmm. You leave it in your mouth for a little while, and it's it, it's, uh, it's a very competitive whisky too, as you said, for the price. I think uh, at back home in Scotland, it's about twenty eight pounds, so probably that will be around about thirty euro mark. Yeah, and you know, folks, if you it's a typical Highland whisky. If you're into, for example, Glen Fiddich or Glen Livet, <coughs> and I'm comparing apples to pears here, but. As I've said before, why not? Why can't you compare an apple to a pear? The the um, it's uh, it's 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 around that mark. It's that kind of. If you're looking for that style of whiskey, it's around that style of whiskey, with one difference that it's got the sherry in it, which the standard bottlings of the other big guys don't do. They do them a step up. The sherry ones. I really like it. Very nice and easy going whisky, a sipping whisky for every day. Yeah? And then, um, hmm, I've got a little bit of water here, eh? and um, as we all know, we tend to put a bit of. Would you like a bit of water, Douglas? Yes, please, yeah. I always like that. Just a wee couple of drops. Couple of spots into it, and it will bring out some of the rest of the flavours to you. Hmm. And this gentleman here, by the way, is. Um, <coughs> Um, they, they brought out a bottling which is actually very scarce now, it's becoming more and more scarce, called Decades. And uh, it's a shame I don't have it here to show it to you, but it's, uh, it was all, for all the decades that you'd worked there, Douglas Wright, and it was the bottling from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the noughties. So we've got, uh, it's a whole bunch of sherry and bourbon. It's and a real mixture. Uh, first time we've done anything like that. So it was released last June and uh, as I said it's I think it's more or less sold out. It was nine thousand limited to nine thousand bottles. And it's for five decades. A mixture of uh, there's one sherry cask, uh, a couple of years of refills and uh, the nineteen ninety six was first full bourbons and the year two thousand and five was a little bit of the light our lightly peated malt. And filled into bourbon casks, so it's a nice little mixture there. Yeah, and it's I think it's sold out from from the distributors <coughs> anyway. But if you may find find one lying around on a shelf of a of a liquor store anywhere near you, and if you do, it's nice to snap it up. Even for collectors, it's a very collectible whiskey. Now I'll just move on uh, because YouTube will allow us about twenty minutes or so. This is the the fifteen. The 15 is the next part of the core range, and uh, I'll walk up with it. It's uh, the 15 is um, <coughs> you can see on the colour of it. I'll show you. I'll take it away from the label so that you can see right through the colour. It's bourbon. Uh, 15 years long on a on a bourbon cask, Douglas. Right. That's correct. This is this is the one that we like to have something in for everybody's taste. So. There is no sherry influence whatsoever in this. It's just American oak casks from uh, day one for 15 years, and you can see in the colour is much lighter. It's uh, it's very fresh, uh, a little bit sharper. It hasn't got the rounded uh, sherry finish, but also very pleasant and a nice lingering aftertaste as well. Yeah, and I've been uh, talking to people about this, uh, folks. Uh, Trying to, some people think because especially if you taste the sh the heavily sherried, well it's not heavily sherried, but you can actually taste the sherry influence from the twelve. They say well, the fifteen is a bit more expensive, but that, that's because it's been three years longer in a barrel. But it's um, uh, they t they tend to find the taste of it falls away a little bit compared to this. But I don't agree, and the reason I don't agree is that I think that people are not tasting it properly. Now, on the nose, I find it actually more pleasant than the 12. Correct. I don't know yeah, if it can be, yeah. The, the, the 12 has got a slight, <coughs> a slight hint of um, sulfurous note, which I don't find unpleasant anyway, but it's typical what you find in some sherry barrels, a little bit of sulfur. And this has got just that, that fresh, lemony and... So sort of citrus. Yeah. Taste of it, yeah. Very zesty, you know, mm. like peels of. Mm. Mm. 
just let it linger in your mouth and it sort of builds up on, on the tongue. Yeah, and indeed I like this. The word sharp, mm -hmm. I like that word. Mm -hmm. I would like this whiskey in the, in the summertime, you know. Yeah. This would be nice to sit outside in the summer. Actually, lashing the rain outside just now. We could have done this in the garden if it would. It's May just now. This will be up for a while, but at the moment it's it's halfway through the month of May, and it's like like winter outside. It's freezing cold and it's raining, but um, I like it actually. And I wonder if water would would, would change it at all. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We went to 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 Martin. I went with a bunch of uh, tourists from Belgium there uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they, we we got the red carpet treatment. They were very very nice to us. Took us all around places, and it's one of the distilleries. If you like to go there, distillery bagging around distilleries in Scotland, uh, compared to other distilleries, it's nice if you want to take a picture of a still from underneath. You know, the uh, mostly you you're up on a platform and you look down at the big shiny copper stills and. It's about and you can take a photograph from underneath of the still, and it's like a, it's like a big spaceship. Now this bourbon uh, thing has got a bit of butter too. I think in the taste, butter. Mm. On the back, there's a little label on the back, folks, eh? and uh, they they actually do a uh, some tasting notes, and it's of the, a light and fresh citrus fruits, vanilla fruit cake. And the oak is prominent throughout, and I agree with that. There is a, a, the, the oak tends to come through, uh, a little bit of tannins. At the side of the tongue, you get the, the tannins coming through, a little bit of hardness. And uh, if you like that kind of whiskey, it's nice. I like I like all whiskey, that's my problem, you know. It's not really much <laughs> many whiskeys I don't like, but... Uh, I think it's a good addition to our range. It only came out in uh, 2009. Because there was a little niche between the the twelve and the eighteen, so we introduced the uh, the fifteen in two thousand and nine. I think it's a great addition to our core range. Yeah. <clears throat> and then we go a, a step up to the to the eighteen years old. Now we could go on for forever. We could mm -hmm. I could go through a whole bunch of other ones, but we'll just stick to these three folks. Mm -hmm. Now the eighteen years old is. Uh, yeah, the camera wants to get another. The 18 years old, could you tell us about that, Douglas? What's uh... The 18 years old is, uh, is a, it's done in the same uh, formula as the 12. Mm -hmm. We batch it after about between 16 and 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, put the, the, some sherries, bourbons and refills together. And then we fill it out into new Olorosas. This is the difference. It's new Olorosas we use uh, sherry's from Spain every year we get some for the 18 and it's two and a half years oh so there's a big difference there it's a long while to be uh, sherried and you can see in the difference even the color is, bringing, uh, is brought out much darker a little bit sweeter and you get the gentle hint of what we think uh, the peatness but it's the, there's no peat at Tamadon yeah it mostly comes from the water but it's more prominent in the 18 years old. <coughs> yeah, just showed the camera there. That was the difference in the... Mm -hmm. in in the, the this is the the 15, and this is the 18. This has had no sherry influence at all. Mm -hmm. This has got sherry influence. Now the 18 is uh, bottled at 46%, which is the preferred uh, strength for for whiskey anoraks, like many of you guys will be. The people who are really into, very much into whiskey. Um, yeah, and the non-chill filtered as well. Non-chill filtered yeah. and mm -hmm. lovely. Mm. It's got some. You like a drop of water? It's a spot drop. Yeah, thank you. The the um. Now there's something spicy about it, which I'm trying to place. What's the spice? Um, it's got a bit of cinnamon to it that you would get that you would maybe put if you if you were baking an apple cake or something. Yeah. Oh, lovely! Oh, beautiful! And I get what you mean by the smoke. Not a little not bit. Peter, no, but where smoke. does the smoke come from? It just head? comes from our water supply in uh, Tamatan. We're pretty high up, three hundred and fifteen meters of above sea level, so 
There was quite a lot of peat in the hills up in our area, so mm -hmm. the water coming down there, if it happens to be a bit rainy or something, is quite brown in colour and uh, runs over the peat and granite. Mm -hmm. It's very soft, but there is a, a gentle hint of smoke or heathery sort of influence there. Oh, lovely. But it's well rounded, nice finish. This is uh, this is of my personal favourite of the three, and mm. and I think the fifteen is, is number two. But the I think it's actually twelve is a lovely sipping whisky for any day. You know, just beautiful. Uh, and the, as I said, of, of the fifteen, out in a summer afternoon, lovely. And Tomatin is quite remote, eh? as you said. You said you named it out on the sticks. Eh? <coughs> It is very remote, it's a very, very small village, uh, just on the side of the A9 between Inverness and Aviemore in the north of Scotland. Uh, the population of the village is about five, six hundred people, but very scattered area, just around about the hills. And, and for you guys' information, if you ever visited, it's not one of the, the, the facilities that get visited like all, all the space site ones and stuff, but it's... Um, to be honest, it's not really a picture postcard type of distillery, but the interesting part about it is uh, they've got a cooperage, you can go and see the cooper, you can watch how barrels are getting made, and you can uh, you can taste wonderful whiskies. And the folk up there are lovely, they're really nice and friendly, and the ladies that run the shop are actually a real good laugh, they like a good joke, they'll make fun with you, and you have a right good time up there. And so for any of you who are looking for tomato, ask your local liquor store for it and uh, see if he'll know the proper name. It's not tomatin at all, it's tomatin. In Scotland, always the second vowel gets spoken out the most, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. And uh, from Douglas Campbell and myself, from uh, from Scotch and folk, from just wishing you guys Slanchiva until the next time. Slanchiva. Slanchiva.